This is part four in the same line for thermochem. This is the heat of neutralization of HCl and sodium hydroxide. This we're expecting to be an exothermic reaction. We'll see how that plays differently than part three, but otherwise the math is really similar. Here's our sample data set. So uh, we know the volume of the six molar HCl, that's 15 milliliters, and in this case, for sodium hydroxide, it's also 15 milliliters. The T initial of the water, again, is the same as the T initial for the calorimeter, 20. And then we measured T final to be 50 degrees after uh, things that are So there's a few calculations to do for part four. First, like part three, we have to find the moles. Uh, so in this case, uh, we have a dilution uh, formula of sorts, but the molarity times the volume, if you convert the volume to liters, then you'll get moles all left over. We also need the total mass of water in this particular calculation. If you remember from before, there's 15 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide, 15 milliliters of the HCl. Uh, that's going to contribute for a total of 30 milliliters. We're assuming that the density of both of those are near the density of water. And so you see the density of water right here. If you multiply 30, and it's basically one, one gram per milliliter, it's 30 grams. So the milliliters and the grams will be equal. We're going to use that number towards the end. Okay, so Q reaction, just the same as part three, is negative Q water plus Q cal. So again, because there's a Q in this, or there's a reaction, I should say, then we're going to have a Q here that's not associated with a temperature change, but really an enthalpy change. Now these two Qs, though, are associated with temperature changes. Just like before, Q of water is MCP delta T, Q cal is CP uh, delta T, uh, CSP here, CP there. So then, the mass of water, that's what we had to find right here, that's why we needed this number, and it's not unusual for a question to give you a volume and you have to convert to the mass and you often just use one gram per milliliter if it's an aqueous solution because you're assuming that the density of aqueous solution is similar to that of water. So that's the 30. This is the same number as before. And 50 minus 30 degrees C uh, for final minus initial. Here again we have CP for the calorimeter. Remember this is the average from part one. We're still using that number, 50 minus 20. And then for, uh, that'll give us a negative number here. Negative makes a lot of sense because negative is exothermic. That means heat is given off and that's what we expect from part four. So that's good. You got a positive number there, that's a problem. So delta H of reaction, just like part three, is Q of reaction divided by N, that's moles. Q of reaction is right here, negative 9676. Moles is 0 0.090 moles. So you just put those two numbers in. Uh, because it's exothermic, you expect a negative answer. It's 1.08 times 10 to 5 joules per mole. And there's your enthalpy of reaction for part four.